this is Bishop Anderson Luri, your father in the ministry or former instructor. And uh, this is a mini course that I have put together. For the last several weeks, I have been preaching in my pulpit the Apostles' Creed, uh, known in ancient literature as the Symbolum Apostolorum. Uh, I've decided to take a few minutes to condense all of what I have been sharing in the Apostles' Creed and to put together this mini course for my sons and daughters in the ministry, as well as former students. This is not nearly as long as the several sermons that I'm preaching on uh, Sunday after Sunday, but I've tried to condense and give you a concise yet comprehensive understanding of what the Apostle Creed is, why it is so very important, and what it means even line by line and stands up by stands. So I want to take you to my virtual classroom and uh, begin now with this teaching, this mini course on the Apostles' Creed, known in the Latin as the Symbolum Apostolorum. Well, hello, this is Bishop Andy C. Luther, and I'm coming to you in the office of Father in the Ministry. I am so delighted to be able to share with you in this particular capacity. I'm coming to you as a mentor, a coach, a professor, instructor, teacher. This is actually prepared for my students who uh, I've had the privilege of teaching as well as my sons and daughters in the ministry. Okay, let's get started. I want to talk about Symbolum Apostolorum or the Apostles Creed years before the Bible was canonized and made available as secret literature that we would use as a proof text for our faith the early church had the task of being able to teach early Christians what it was that they believed. The Apostle Creed was an early church catechism that early Christians memorized so they could explain clearly and easily what they believed. The Apostle's Creed was not so much a document that was read, but was rather a recitation that could be delivered. Even if the person did not have a book or pamphlet to read from, it was believed that the reason there are 12 stanzas to the Creed is because each of the 12 disciples contributed a stanza to the creed. All right, let's begin here. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. One of the purposes of the Apostles' Creed was to defend early Christians from false teachers. One of the false doctrines being circulated at the time was that there were many gods, not just one. Roman Empire worship an assortment of gods. The creed, therefore, wanted to establish early on that Christians only believed in one God and that this God was the creator of the heavens and the earth. And Jesus Christ, God's only son, at the time of the creed, there were many who were claiming to be the son of God. Even the Roman emperor they claimed to that title. However, the creed made it clear that God only had one son, that son was Jesus the Christ. The next stanza of the creed says, Conceive of the Holy Spirit and was born to the Virgin Mary. To refute those who taught that Jesus was adopted at his baptism, there was a competing group called the Marcionites. The creed clearly states that Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit and therefore not contaminated or corrupted by the seed of Adam or original sin. Now, before I leave this, let me remind you that in the book of Genesis, it, we are taught that sin was deposited in the seed of man, Adam. Therefore, any person born of the seed of man was born a sinner shaped in iniquity because they were a result of Adam's seed. Therefore, the only way that Jesus could be sinless, he had to be born independent of any man's seed. The next stanza says, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried, and on the third day rose again from the dead. Only by suffering did Jesus pay the price that was necessary to overcome sin and redeem fallen humanity. According to the Old Testament, the sacrifice had to die in order for it to be accepted as an offering. Finally, to convince unbelievers, the creed states that Jesus was buried, which was proof that he was indeed 
dead. The next stanza says he descended into hell and on the third day rose again from the dead. Now the image of hell was based upon the garbage pit outside the city of Jerusalem at the time of Jesus, which burned continually because there was always fresh trash being deposited in the pit to fuel the fire that burned. Biblical writers borrowed this image because it best explained how sinners would be lost. That takes us to the next stanza, which is stanza six. Now, let me remind you that it was believed that Jesus went to hell to retrieve all of the souls that had already died, ascended to hell, and is seated on the right hand of the Father after rescuing the souls of all those since Adam for hell. Jesus returns to his Father to report the completion of his mission to redeem man. He afterwards is allowed to sit while all others are standing in the place that denotes and affirms his sonship to the Father. Well, friends, we've been going pretty heavily. I'm going to take a quick break now, and then we're going to get ready for part two of this mini course. I am Bishop Andy Luter. This is a customized mini course prepared for my sons and daughters in the ministry as well as former students. Well, if your coffee break is over, let's continue with the Apostles' Creed. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. That stands the seven. The Creed affirms that Jesus is expected to return to the earth realm. At the time, there were many non-believers who argued that Jesus was gone forever. However, the Apostles' Creed held out the hope that Jesus would return and would this time have a different mission from before. This is the major difference between Christianity and Judaism. Judaism was looking for a Messiah that would come and judge the world and deliver his people from their Roman rulers. Jesus did not come to judge but to save. It is expected that when he returns, he will judge both the living and the dead. Stanza 8, I believe in the Holy Spirit. From the beginning, we have taught that the Apostles' Creed was a catechism that affirms and celebrates Trinitarianism. As such, these latter stanzas of the Creed makes reference to the Holy Spirit, which we teach is the third person of the Trinity. Now, we do not believe in three gods. We believe in three persons of the Godhead, just like there is water, ice, and steam, or a sunrise, high noon, and sunset, there is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. This brings us to stanza nine. The Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints. Now, this stanza is not speaking of the Roman Catholic Church. The word Catholic or Catholica uh, literally means universal or worldwide. The creed here is contending that the church is a worldwide enterprise and faith. Likewise, the usage of the term communion here does not mean Lord's Supper as we would normally assume. Communion is made up of the word com, which means with, and the word union, which technically means one. So when you put them together, it literally means with one which is to suggest that the saints or members of the church are to be one and united. Stanza 10, we're turning the corner now. The cornerstone of Christianity is forgiveness. It is what makes the Christian faith distinct from many others. Jesus reminds us to forgive one another as God has forgiven us. Stanza 11 talks about the resurrection of the body. Just like we believe in the resurrection of Jesus the Christ, the creed also teaches that we will be resurrected. And the final stanza, the life everlasting, amen. Ever since Adam and Eve ruptured man's relationship with God in the garden of Eden, man has been attempting to reconcile back unto God. The last line of the creed promises that when that 
we will be restored to our original relationship with God. Well, friends, that takes up all of my time, and I certainly want to thank you for yours. I am your father in the ministry or former instructor, Bishop Andy Sinever. This has been our mini course on Symbolum Apostolorum, more commonly known as the Apostles' Tree. Until next time, God loves you, we love you, and we look forward to seeing you real soon.